your slides. Eric, hello, good to see you. Welcome. Hi, hi everyone. Thanks Welcome for having to me. This seminar. So you're going to be sharing a little bit about the uh, the story of Gothenburg and how you have been telling the history of Gothenburg to uh, people, right? Yeah, yeah, I will try to make that scope. Yeah. Perfect. So we're going to make sure there you are up on our big screen. We can all see you now. And I think you can hear us as well, right? Yeah, um, um, can hear you. Perfect. So if you feel ready, I'm going to give the floor to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll start sharing my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, once more, thanks for having me. Uh, how, how this previous presentation was very interesting. <laughs> I hope uh, also my pre uh, presentation could be interesting for you. Uh, I'm going to talk about Virtual Gothenburg, which is our name for our uh, development project uh, concerning Digital Twin for the sustainable uh, city of Gothenburg. Uh, my name is Eric Frankson. I'm a project manager for uh, Virtual Gothenburg and also what you call a geodata strategist working with geographic information in all kinds of processes within within the city. Uh, the, the image you can see here in front of you is uh, actually a part of our Digital Twin. Uh, when we used it uh, in our 400 years anniversary, uh, which is actually this year. And in this summer in June, we had a large event uh, with a large concert with great tent. You can see it in the blue, uh, a huge uh, party area in the central city of Gothenburg. And we actually planned that area uh, in the digital twin. I'll get back to you with that uh, case later. But I'm going to start with a little prologue uh, from uh, work with our history uh, of Gothenburg. Uh, I don't know if you know about the history of Gothenburg, but the, the, um, it was uh, planned by the Dutch and uh, the first city evolved at uh, 1621, you can say, at the 17th century. And we have actually made uh, a digital twin, you can say, uh, a historic model, 3D model of the, the historic Gothenburg. Uh, and we started, uh, this was in, in collaboration with the City Museum. We started with uh, uh, maps from the beginning. Uh, here you can see uh, Gothenburg at the right of the map. Uh, we have different kind of materials. Um, different uh, maps, uh, very good quality of the maps. Uh, this was architect from 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 Holland, uh, which made uh, the maps, a map from the different uh, uh, defense uh, uh, constructions uh, around uh, the, the central city. And we digitized those maps, uh, like uh, building different parcels, uh, and then uh, we made a 3D terrain of it. And uh, we worked with this kind of parametric technique when we use, uh, we can say footprint of the buildings and uh, parametric technique would be used in the gaming industry, movie industry when constructing large uh, 3D environment. Uh, and we can make different variations of the, of the, of the buildings in the city, as you can see in those picture. And when we placed them uh, in the different parcels, we got this kind of uh, start uh, of the uh, historical city. And uh, then we used uh, the gaming engine, the same engine that we, we, if you play Fortnite, Unreal Engine, and put the 3D model in the gaming engine. And then we have the 3D model that you actually was like a, a game that you can walk around in. And we uh, developed uh, a lot of images, uh, and we uh, you can see some here. And we have also the the fortress, uh, Nya Elspor's fortress, uh, which entrance from the sea. It's actually looking the same today at present time as it did when it was constructed. I don't know the exact year of the construction of the fortress, but uh, it's uh, one of the pieces in in the model. And this was uh, actually a project within the 400 years anniversary of the city. So uh, 
if you go to the city museum in Gothenburg and look at the, the exhibition, Göteborg's photos of the birth of Gothenburg, you can actually see a film, film uh, which is made from animations of the 3D model. And you can also see this in, with the, the, the glasses, virtual glasses, Oculus Rift. Uh, that was a start uh, with working with this parametric technique. And we have used the same technique constructing our digital twin of the present environment of Theodore of Gothenburg. But why, why a digital twin then? We, we saw that we have those societal challenges uh, like uh, the climate change. Uh, it was an ongoing pandemic when we started. Uh, we, have, we are a segregated city uh, and uh, we are building uh, we have a huge exploitation in the central parts um, in the city and new transportation needs and a lot of data, uh, a huge amount of data uh, within the, the different departments of municipal, municipality, data that we can work with in, in new ways. And we thought that building a digital twin could be one way to handle those um, um, obstacles on the, our sustainability goals. Uh, so we started project developing a digital twin uh, for more efficient planning, control, management and experience of the city to get a better understanding of uh, these challenges so we could get some kind of consensus as it's in a political organization we have to have some kind of consensus to take the the right decisions uh, to make actions uh, we are investing a, a lot in digital twins for the city uh, or in west sweden we have dtcc which actually is a uh, a part of of uh, chalmers university uh, they are uh, they have performed research in, in uh, digital twin for cities, and we have a lot of other projects. Uh, among others, we have Virtual Gothenburg Lab, which is a, a test bed for exploring new ways of work with the digital twin. So it's a lot of things going on concerning digital twins. And we also see that uh, we say every department, all, all, all parts of the city, all departments could actually work with the digital twin from urban planning, of course, but also business and labor, uh, health care, safety, education, learning about the city, its history, its uh, development and the future, um, democracy and uh, uh, engagement of the citizens, um, the community, but also culture and leisure, say, um, virtual concerts and, and so it could be one example. We have seen that we have this nine benefits uh, of the digital twin that we're working with. First of all, climate. How can we uh, how can we make steps to being a climate neutral city uh, in 2030? Uh, how can we work with resilience? Uh, for instance, climate change adaptions of the city, uh, urban planning, of course, making scenarios of the future city, maintenance of the city uh, in a smart, effective way, tourism, uh, how can we present the city uh, and how can you visit the city before you actually go to the real visit, and uh, uh, pre site visits for different events and so on. And innovation together with uh, companies and the business uh, industry uh, regarding sustainability. Learning, as I said, how can we learn about the city uh, in the schools and democracy. And finally, branding, putting Gothenburg on the map as a, perhaps the most innovative uh, city in the world. How can we make that happen? But what's a digital twin then? Of course, it's a, a visual representation or something, but it could also be a representation of, of the function. Uh, but to be a digital twin, you also have to connect information to the 3D objects in the digital twin. And that uh, information could also be uh, sensor IoT information, which uh, uh, describes what happens in real time. And you can also work with the AI to perform analysis and uh, 
visualization also to to collect data to the digital twin and you can also talk about uh, different time dimensions we have the present data uh, describing the city uh, we have simulated data which actually is uh, when we work on urban planning and or uh, strategic planning of the city making scenarios of the future uh, we can work in the real time uh, dimension it's more like what happens now uh, data from census i said and perhaps a more timeless uh, dimension experience the city uh, the history and the future okay uh, what are we doing we are building a one 800 square kilometer digital twin so it's a huge area we do this uh, mainly by building a semantic, we call it, or parametric model. Uh, if you, some of you work with GIS, Geographic Information System, it's the same uh, principle. We have, for instance, footprints of the buildings, and we have uh, objects from uh, geodata from our different departments forming this kind of 3D ob objects. Uh, we can also work with this kind of photorealistic model, but that's more like a static uh, model. We use that kind of approach as well, but uh, our digital twin, Birch Gothenburg, is more the semantic one. And we use data that we already have in our departments, and then we uh, transform that, you can say, in this kind of parametric modeling, and then we use Unreal Engine and other tools for presentation of the data, and then we can use it in different applications. And here you can see one example. Uh, so to the left, we have the 3D model, and to the right is an aerial photo of, of the same area. So it's uh, quite the same information yet that you see in the 3D model as we have in the, in the physical real environment. And here you can see uh, um, an aerial view of the 3D model. Uh, this is, uh, we call that Evenemangstorket, a street in, in the central part of the city when we had the arenas and so on. And here example uh, how the uh, digital twin looks like uh, now. Uh, it's quite more. We're working on the, the photorealism and building more realistic uh, streets as you see in this picture with the, the paintings and you also see trees uh, which actually are the same trees as in reality the same spot and the same species actually and we also work on the on the facade to get those more realistic uh, in uh, like the 3d textures uh, on the facades but what you see is actually a little amount of the actual digital twin. It's what it was underneath the the surface, as in the iceberg. As it was interesting, all the data that we have uh, in within the different departments of, of of the city, and therefore we also work with as information model, which describes uh, the ownership of the data, the de definitions, and the information model describing this uh, physical environment. And as I said, it's uh, more like a JIS. Uh, different objects have their information, and the information is stored in databases. Uh, and uh, the information is stored as, uh, as in, in this system information model structure. Now, this picture is actually showing the concept architecture and we have base data, all the geographic data we have describing the physical environment. And with that data, we create this kind of parametric representation of, of the city called Virtual Gothenburg, which actually is our digital twin. We have a data warehouse where we could uh, uh, present data as different kind of file packages and you can download the data. And then we have a service tire that we can build and uh, then we can add other kind of data from our uh, different departments, different processes within the city in the digital twin. And then we can uh, create different applications and collaborate uh, with those. We also, as I said, have a virtual Gothenburg lab, uh, which is a testbed for innovation and collaboration together with the industry. And some examples uh, then, uh, urban planning, of course, uh, this is a uh, central and in the central city, central parts of Gothenburg. Uh, the detailed planning of the area. 
we also work a lot with the, the climate change, of course. This is a scenario, uh, how the city could look like in 100 years to come when we have a high UC main sea level of perhaps one meter and also added a storm occasion with uh, additionally one and a half meter. Then we get two, two and a half meter high sea levels. And this is a animation or presentation how the city could look like uh, if we had that occasion. And of course, we must avoid this and uh, build different kind of climate change adaptions, uh, like this huge gate to the sea. This is one way to protect the city in the future. We also have made this kind of scenario from, from heavy rain uh, or skyfall, as you could say. This is a 100 year rainfall and the central uh, part of the city called Linnegatan. And uh, this actually could happen uh, when we have this kind of heavy rain in, a, uh, in, a, in some area, a uh, small area of the city. Uh, the water can flow with so intensity and energy, so which actually could uh, uh, move objects like cars in the streets. And we have seen that um, some days ago, we saw it in New York, we have seen it in Europe, we have in the summer, we saw this in Norway and Sweden. So this is um, what we're standing in for uh, when the climate change. So we must adapt the city to it. We also work with, uh, uh, this is the case from Virtual Gartenberg Lab, when we work with a very well-known car producer in Gartenberg, perhaps you can guess who. Uh, now this is one way to test autonomous uh, vehicles in uh, uh, in a, uh, a virtual uh, environment. Of course, you can't do this uh, in the reality. You must start with the virtual environment for testing those kind of of, uh, of um, we say uh, autonomous vehicles. You can see here how the the, the cars interact with pedestrians. And we also work with the, uh, I don't know if you hear the sound, do you? Which we work with the uh, with, uh, sounds in this uh, animation. So to see, uh, this is very important working with this kind of vehicles, how, how, how it sounds. And uh, I started with this image. This is actually two images. One is rea real and one is a digital twin. I don't know if you can see uh, which one is uh, reality, but actually the up to the right is, uh, uh, drone photography from the event the summer and the the large image is from the, the digital twin but I think that they're quite similar. Uh, here we have worked with a tool from NVIDIA called Omniverse which makes it possible to collaborate within the same 3D model uh, if you can work with different kind of software you can uh, work with the same model so it's very good in, in collaboration projects. Uh, finally, I'm going to talk a little about citizen engagement concerning digital twins and urban planning. We have a tool called Minstad. Uh, you can find it on minstad.gutoboy.se if you want to look into it. And uh, here you can see uh, we have uh, stories from citizens in Gothenburg called Göteborg Berättar. We also have suggestions from citizens uh, about uh, urban planning. And we also have uh, the uh, larger uh, urban planning projects in in the in the platform. For instance, you can see here uh, very much uh, very a huge amount of, of, of suggestions from the citizens. I think we have approximately two three thousand suggestions about it could be about um, um, urban planning. It could be about traffic solutions. It could be if you want some restaurant or cafe, some spot of the city, or whatever you want to talk about in uh, regarding urban planning. Here, for instance, is a 